ooh, need a refresh. Got some frizz, got some crazy stuff going on. So if you wanna see how I try to revive this crazy stuff, then just keep watching. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm a licensed hairstylist with over 20 years of experience. And on this channel, I use those 20 years of experience to help you have healthy, happy hair. So as I said in the intro, I do need a refresh. It has been, I am on day three and I've been trying the Camille Rose products and ordinarily I don't usually refresh on day three or day two, but when I feel like I have to or when I feel like I need to perk some things up, I will use steam. I do have another way that I'll refresh and I'll show that to you after I get done with the steaming. That'll probably be on day four or day five hair when my hair needs a lot more help than what it does right now. Um, so like I showed you, you know, I've got like this weird thing sticking out over here. I've got some frizz, which is to be expected. Um, and then just some curls that are looking a little bit stretched out and smashed, but not really bad. So this is when I like to use my steamer and I use one from Target and I'll grab that right This is the steamer that I use. I got this from Target. Um, I don't know, probably a couple of years ago. Got it for my clothes actually, but I like using it on my hair. And I'll just show you how I do this. So it's got, the one I have has two heat settings on here. You can see it's got the low and the high, and I like to use it on the low, and that's plenty warm enough. Like it still gets pretty hot actually. So I like to just go ahead and get the steam going. Sometimes it, you have to be a little careful because it'll like spit out some water at first. And then all I do is I just go over my hair and I like to keep it moving because I don't want that heat in one spot for too long because then you could potentially have heat damage. So I like to keep it moving just like what I do with my blow dryer when I am diffusing my hair. I keep that moving and um, kind of hovering. And so I'll just go over my entire head. And the thing that I like about steaming my hair is that it's really controlled. So you can do your whole head if you feel like your head needs it. You can do just one spot if you feel like it needs it. Um, if one spot needs a little bit more help than the others, you can continue to go over that until you feel like it's improving. And um, there's just a lot of control. So you can use as little or as much steam as you want. And as you see when I'm going through it, I'm kind of smoothing down some of the frizz that I have. And I'm not really being very aggressive and I'm not aggressively like scrunching everything up because I feel like that that actually causes frizz. And we certainly don't wanna do that if we're trying to refresh and make everything better. Okay, so my steamer ran out of water and I had to fill it back up. But as you can see, I started with this side and it already looks better. Like I don't have as much frizz sticking all the way out. And that one strand of hair is no longer sticking out. So this is definitely starting to look a little bit better on this side. Yes, there's a little bit of frizz in there and it's not 100%. Um, the stuff in the front is looking pretty good. I've got some nice little tight curls and stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's basically all there is to that. I just keep going over my hair until I feel like it's improved and looking better and I kind of keep smoothing down the frizz. And if I had one spot that was really bad, I would just continue going over it. And this side tends to be my worst side anyway, especially back here, like this one there. I don't know, kind of does its own little thing. So, and then this side, you can even see, is looking a little bit better. Yes, I still have some frizz, but it's not like what it was. And I'll just hit that a little bit more. But I like that this gets your hair slightly damp, but not like really damp, not really wet. And again, like I said, it's 100% in your control, in your control. So you can get your hair as damp as you want or keep it as dry as you want. The other thing that I like is it kind of softens up your hair a little bit too and reactivates the product that's in there. So all in all, this is pretty much my favorite way of refreshing. Um, I do have another way that I do it, like I said, when it gets really bad, 
which is, you know, day four or day five, and I'll show you how that's done. But for now, like you can see, this has definitely gotten quite a bit better. Like I do, I had that, if you remember, I had that thing that really stuck out on top and that's not there anymore. And I don't aggressively scrunch again also, like I told you before, because I feel like that that's gonna add, and typically it does add more frizz in it. And just getting it, you know, slightly damp with the steam is usually enough for it to kind of start to spring back up on its own as it cools off, as it dries off. And then the other thing that I do is I follow it up with the Verb Ghost Oil and one, two pumps. When I'm refreshing with the Verb Ghost, why can't I say that? When I'm refreshing with the Verb Ghost Oil, I tend to use a little bit more than when I'm scrunching out the crunch on wash day, um, just because I've got a little bit more frizz and I find that this just really helps finish off the refreshing and taming down of the frizz. And then if there's like any spots in particular, sometimes I'll take, you know, that oil that's on my hands and I might, but I do this after I've kind of spread it out. I don't want that a ton of product on my hand when I'm doing it because then you'll just wind up with, you know, a really big greasy curl but putting some product in there and then going through and finding spots that you kind of want to touch up and you can twirl it around to either encourage the curl. I do it mostly just to get the hair to kind of clump back together and smooth back together in its shape, in its curl, in its curl family with the rest of its friends, whatever. Um, so that's typically what I do. And as you can see, my hair is definitely looking a lot better than when I started. Um, the frizz is a little bit better and even though it's kind of droopy-ish right now because I got rid of some of that frizz, part of it is the products that I used, I'm, like I said, I'm testing out the Camille Rose products and they certainly didn't add volume to my hair. They didn't really weigh it down, but they didn't add volume either. Um, but as my hair starts to kind of, it's still slightly damp from the steam, so as it starts to dry, it'll start to perk back up a little bit, but it'll be a lot less frizzy and more defined. So yeah, this is why I like this, because as I'm showing you here, definitely much better than what I started. And do I still have some frizz? Yep, I do, but it's nowhere near what it was when I started. So this is my first way that I like to refresh my hair. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right here for two reasons that I'm done. And this is basically how I would leave it because it's looking a lot better. And then also because my ring light is starting to die. So I'm gonna lose my light. So I'm gonna say goodbye for now. That is how I steam it. That's literally it. You just move the steam, you put it where you need it. Um, you leave it, you know, you go back to really, you know, trouble spots and stuff like that. But otherwise you just hover it over and it's quick, it's easy, and it really does help. And like I said, it, it, like I said, it softens everything up. It perks up some flattened out, stretched out curls. It's just a really great way to do it. And it's definitely my favorite way to do it. And then I will see you in a little bit with either my day four, but most likely my day five hair and show you what I do with that. Here we are on day five. And as you can see, I've got my hair all up in a ponytail. Yesterday, I'd actually spent a good chunk of the day in a ponytail because I couldn't stand it anymore. It was just hanging in my face and driving me nuts. Um, so I'm not sure what we have going on, but let's take a look and see. <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely needing a good refresh here. Um, like I said, I do typically wash my hair every three to five days, but if I were to get to this point and, you know, decide, oh, hey, I really need to go somewhere and I don't have time to wash it and start from scratch, um, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh. This is what I would do. So I have my stuff gathered in front of me that I'm going to be using, and then I'll show you the steps that I'm going to be doing. So a lot of times I like to use Whatever gel it was that I used to style my hair, that's usually what I like to use when I refresh it. That way I know that it's not going to have a bad reaction with what's in there because it's already the same thing. 
Um, but for this, I used the Camille Rose products and this was the gel that I used and it's pretty thick. So I'll show you that. Like you pump it out and it doesn't really move. So it's pretty thick. Um, I'm just gonna smear that on my hand and I'll show you why in a second. Um, because I don't know that if it's going to work with the gel that I wanna use. And the gel that I wanna use is actually going to be the Weedod Vital Curl Plus Gel. Um, I really like that one. It is watery and that's what I really like to use when I'm refreshing my hair is a more watery kind of gel. Um, I just find that it distributes really easily. I like a water, watery kind of gel anyway, even when I'm just styling my hair on wash day. It's just my preference. I find that watery gels distribute easier and um, it coats the hair better. I don't know. I just, I really like watery type gels. And for thicker ones like this, I will often uh, water them down when I'm using them so that they do spread a lot easier throughout my hair. So I am going to actually, now that I've got this one gel on my hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the other gel in and mix it together on my hand just to see if it causes any sort of like weirdness and it doesn't seem to so I mean it's kind of made like a snot like consistency but this has been on my hair for a while and it's kind of dry um, so it shouldn't look like that exactly on my hair but what I'm looking for is that it's not creating like these chunky goopy blobs I guess. So I'm just gonna rinse this off my hand real quick. So now that I've washed that off of my hand and we've determined that there's not gonna be any kind of like really gross reaction where it creates almost like cottage cheese, um, we can go ahead and proceed. And I'll give you kind of a close up look of what's going on with my hair right now. Like you can see, I've got lots of frizz. I've got this whatever that is. I've got really stretched out curls because I did put it back in a ponytail so it loosened up those curls. Like the tighter spirals that I had around my face no longer exist. Um, so anyway, we'll just go ahead and proceed. And I have my gel and I have my clip for sectioning and I have a water bottle to mix the water with the gel that I'm gonna use. Usually I actually just use my faucet and I'll stick a little bit of gel in and run my hand under the faucet and get water on there, but that gets kind of noisy and I would actually be like right up here and be a little awkward. So we're just gonna use a water bottle to dilute the gel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna section my hair and when I style my hair, on wash day, I actually go in three sections because I'm defining with a brush. And when I refresh, I don't get that involved. I just do two sections and it might help if you put the clip in the right way around. So just from like right around the temple all the way around and you can see I need to cover my grays or actually I blend them in. Um, I think I think I might actually do that on camera. Um, don't hold me to it, I don't know, but um, I have to do it anyway, so I might as well do it on camera and show you how I actually blend my grays. I don't really cover them so much, I blend them. But anyway, um, how I do this is then I also split it into two sections, one on each side, roughly um, down the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, it's fine. So. Then what I do is I take my gel and I put in roughly this amount of gel. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like just a small puddle in the very center of my palm. And then what I do is I spray a lot of water and I can't show you this or else it's just gonna go to the floor, but I spray a lot more water in there until I create kind of a puddle of water in my palm as I'm holding it, you know, like, like this. I'll kind of cut my hand like that and as long as that's all filled with water. And then I mix the two together, emulsify on my hand, and then I just go through and go over my hair and get it good and coated. And then 
If I feel like I need more water, I will go ahead and use more water. I typically don't use any more gel at this point because I've got enough. And then I'll start kind of scrunching it a little bit to bring some of those curls back to life. Not a whole lot um, because they'll kind of start to do that on their own just from having gotten wet. Like you can see a little bit the difference already. This is more flattened out and frizzy and this is starting to kind of curl up or at least as much as the underneath of my hair curls up. I have many different curl patterns so some of it's wavy, some of it's curly and in the cases of these, some of it's completely straight. So um, I just kind of keep going until I feel like it's wet enough and has enough gel in it to kind of start coming back to life and for the gel to kind of hold. And actually, I think I'm going to put a pea sized amount of gel with a little bit more water and go one more time over because I really want to make sure that when I diffuse my hair that I don't cause frizz, which is another reason why I really like using this gel is because it creates a nice cast and that is important because then I can always let it scrunch out the crunch later and this will keep it from getting frizzy while I'm diffusing. So I just toss that to the back while I work on the next section and I do the same thing over here after I work out look-see big old rat's nest. Not sure where that came from, but slightly deep finger detangle a rat's nest. Sometimes my hair is even worse than this, like way more tangly. Kind of depends. Um, these products were really, really moisturizing and emollient and it had a lot of slip. So my hair still has a lot of that slip to it. So I'm able to easily get my fingers through. But this is not normal for me to be able to run my fingers through this much um, on day five. Usually it's just pretty tangled up, especially close to my scalp where all of that Shed hair has been released, but hasn't really fallen out until it gets brushed. You know how it goes. Anyway, so do the same thing on this side. Start with a puddle of gel. Fill my hand up with some water. Mix together and get it all over the place because it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't get stuff all over the place. All right, put a little bit more water. And the reason why I'm spraying on my hands and going through my hair is because I feel like this gives me more control over where the water is going. You'll notice I'm not really bringing the water too close to my roots. Um, I just don't want to do that. I kind of like leaving the roots dry because even if there's some frizz and stuff up towards the roots, that's okay because that's going to help keep some volume that I have. So I'm okay with that. And I just kind of assess what it's looking like as I go along as you know just to determine if I need a little bit more water or if I need a little bit more gel and I don't get it completely wet like I said and I only really focus on the areas that I need to and kind of scrunch it just a little bit I don't do a ton of scrunching because I find that scrunching during um, refreshing can cause some frizz because your hair is not completely wet. Now, if you completely wet down your hair to the point where it is when you wash your hair, then you're gonna be able to scrunch a lot easier and not create frizz. However, when you're just making it kind of damp like this, uh, that's not gonna be the case. So you have to be kind of careful or scrunch when you've got the product and the water in there so that you can get it to curl up as opposed to frizz up. And so I did add just a tiny bit more gel and some water when I did that little bit and kind of scrunched it. So I'm gonna to toss it over my shoulder and then I'm going to separate these two sections up here. And this one I'm going to put back up out of the way. So I'm just gonna twist it around. And no, this is not incredibly neat and tidy but it gets the job done. All right so when I get over to this side then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. 
Um, when I get to the top layers, sometimes I pay a little bit more attention to what's going on there and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, just kind of depending on how bad the frizz is and what's going on. So again, I start with a bit of gel, create a puddle of water. Now we've got some nice slime going on and we distribute said slime. And here I actually get my hair just a little bit wetter than I do underneath because this is the part that gets seen the most. And this is the parts where I might even redefine some sections with a brush depending on what it's looking like. So I will just kind of smooth that over and take a look and see what we're looking at. And like this section right here, because it is sitting on the top and it's doing something wonky, I might separate that out. And the pieces around the front. And this is where I will actually get out the spray bottle and dredge that sucker down. Grab your brush and go through it gently because it's tangly. Probably be better to use a detangling brush at this point, but um, as long as you're very gentle, you can use a brush like this, that's fine. So I do feel like my hair has plenty of gel in it. And then I just, what I did there was I sandwiched my hair between my finger and the brush to create a little bit of tension on it. Um, like what I do when I am defining my hair when I'm styling it on wash day. And you can see that it's kind of smoothed everything down because I brushed through it. And then I very, very gently start kind of scrunching it up just to kind of encourage some of that curl formation. I can feel back here, I don't have a whole lot of water or gel back there, so I'm just gonna add just a tad bit more. And it's looking like my hair is actually a lot wetter than what it is, but if you look up close, like it's actually pretty dry. It's mostly on the outside that it's pretty wet. And especially in those sections where that where I defined it with the brush and you can see where that really brought down the frizz a lot. It clumped everything back together. It defined everything together. Um, and it's starting to kind of curl back up all on its own. Don't really need to do a whole lot to encourage it. And then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm probably gonna have to do this and rebrush that again, but we'll see. And gel, oops, I forgot to put the gel in first, whatever, doesn't matter as long as it all gets in there. So a little bit of gel, a little bit of water again, create slime, apply the slime, assess, see what it's looking like. Scrunch, apply a little bit more water. So I still actually can feel some slime on my palms of my hand. So I have some gel in there and I'll just go over it. And that's really helping with lay down that frizz and start to get some of the curl back. And this is the section that I'm probably gonna redefine with a brush, but I'm just gonna get that out of my way for now. I don't want to break that apart. Some more water. Tiny smidge of gel, like a pea size amount. And with that little bit in there, go ahead and scrunch, but make sure that your hand is wet, has product in it. Mostly make sure it's wet. And another reason why I like using this particular gel too, aside from the liquidy nature of it, is because I feel like it's consistency with like the sliminess of it once it's mixed with the water is perfect for 
really smoothing down the frizz, creating that definition again, and really help helping to kind of lock everything into place. Um, I think some gels are just too sticky and as you're working with it, it like your little individual hairs will stick to the gel on your hand and pull away from your hair, which is going to cause frizz. And I feel like this gel does not do that. It's, it's just, it's a wonderful product because it is a good hard holding gel, but it is not a sticky hard, hold, hard holding gel. Um, so I try to avoid sticky because of that problem. So I'm gonna get this whole section completely wet, like I did with the other section. Oh great, now I have drip bills. Oh, okay, ah. Yeah, it's just water, Michelle. We don't need to be that dramatic. Okay, and then because this one was left out, it doesn't have any gel in it. So I'm gonna put about that much gel in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's starting to run, so it looks like it's more than what it was. Um, probably a dime size amount of gel, maybe a little less. And get that kind of nicely coated. And once that's nicely coated, I like to just go over with whatever's on my hands and kind of run it along my hair because why wipe it off and waste it? when I can put it in my hair and use it. I'm getting dribbles of water all over my shirt. Which brings me to another issue that I'm discovering with doing this whole um, YouTube thing is most of my shirts are dark colored or black. And with my hair being so dark, you can't see my hair against the black shirts or the dark shirts. So I run out of shirts really quickly because I keep trying to find lighter colored shirts, which I don't have a whole lot of, so that you guys can see my hair. Um, all right, so I am just gonna go ahead and go straight up off my head. And again, I'm holding the hair between my finger and my brush to create the tension. And I drop it down and eat my hair. Don't eat your hair. And the front, do the same thing. I try to get I try to brush it and smooth it as close to my scalp in the front because I don't want like a big thatched up bit of frizz at my scalp. So I try to get as close to my scalp as possible when I'm brushing it to get it nice and smoothed out. And then I bring it down and very gently scrunch it up. Mostly I'm just kind of cupping it up and pushing it up. And then this section here, is feeling a little dry um, and it's usually my worst section so I'm just gonna put a little bit more pea size amount of gel and a little bit of water and go through there and smooth that and scrunch to encourage curl but not cause frizz because my hands are wet the gel is slippery and it's not gonna stick and cause frizz because the last thing that you want to do when you're refreshing your hair is actually cause more frizz than what you started with. So that is actually looking quite a bit better. We'll take a closer look. And you can see a lot of that frizz has come down. And my hair looks like it's pretty wet, but it's actually, like I said, not as wet as what it looks. It's mostly on the top layer that it's wet and on the ends, which is where the biggest problems were. And then of course in the front, this is pretty wet. So there's that. Now we're going to Keep our hands out of our hair as much as possible, and you can either let this air dry or you can dry with a diffuser, and I will be drying with a diffuser. Instead of showing you on camera how I dry my hair, I will just kind of walk you through what I'm gonna do. And basically, I'm just gonna hover diffuse all the way around until I can feel a cast starting, Then I'm gonna flip my head over, bring this right up to my scalp, so where I can feel these prongs on my scalp and very gently move it around in circles to help with some volume. Um, but again, I don't do that until after I have felt the formation of a cast in the rest of my hair. And I'll do that for just a small amount of time, then I'll flip back up and then I'll just hover diffuse again and I'll kind of go back and forth until it's most of the way dry. 
but I don't like doing it until it's completely dry because I find that that actually also creates frizz or more frizz. There will be frizz on this and it will be more frizzy than day one for sure, but it'll be less frizzy than what it was when we started. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dry my hair and then I'll come back and show you the results. My hair is diffused dry and um, like I said, I let it, I diffused it most of the way dry and then I let it air dry for a while. I actually did my nails while I was waiting for it to air dry, so it's plenty dry. And then now all I do is scrunch out the crunch and you can see I definitely have crunch, but I do have a lot less frizz happening and I've got some of the curls back, so that's good. But anyway, I'm gonna do two pumps of my Verb Ghost Oil. Um, on wash days, I usually only do one, but when I refresh, I use two, just because my hair is gonna be more frizzy simply because it's no longer wash day. So I'm going to smooth that over. And make sure it's good and coated. And then with just a little bit left on my hands, you can kind of see the sheen a little bit from what's left on my hands. Now I'm gonna to start to scrunch out the crunch, just like I do on wash day. And this is the crunch scrunched out. So as you can see, show you close up, and I have my curl definition back and the clumping and way less frizz. So there is still a little bit of frizz, but it's not too bad. It's more similar to what I would have on wash day where it's just a tiny amount. And in the front, it's nicely defined. I don't have like a big blob of frizz right at my roots up in the front there. Um, I do have gray roots though. But anyway, it's definitely looking a lot better than what it did when I first started where my hair was really stretched out and it had been up in a ponytail and it looked, you know, not the greatest. These are the two ways that I will refresh my hair when I do refresh. Hopefully you found this video helpful or picked up some tips and tricks on how to refresh your own hair. Uh, you can certainly customize this to your own hair. In fact, um, you should customize it to your own hair. Use a little less gel, use a little more gel. Um, maybe just smooth over the top if necessary. With the steaming, you're just gonna steam where you need it the most. Uh, you can do a refresh all over your head with the steam or you can hit certain spots. You can spot kind of take care of things with a little bit of serum and kind of just coil your hair up together to kind of get rid of some of the frizz and to just spot treat certain curls or certain areas so that you're not doing your entire head. The whole point with the refreshing and especially the way that I do it is so that you're not having to completely wet down your hair all the way back to soaking wet and then starting fresh because that kind of defeats the purpose of doing a refresh. Uh, if you're gonna go that far with it, you might as well just wash your hair and completely start all over. So this is what to do instead of having to completely start all over and how to do the least amount of work possible for what you've got going on and what your situation is. So hopefully that helped. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell while you're at it. If there's anything that you'd like to see, any questions that you'd like to ask, or you'd just like to say hi, please go ahead and leave me a comment down below in my comment section. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.